Hey guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at the Wood doorbell again I installed recently. And we're going to do a walkthrough of getting it added to Home Assistant and setting up a little automation with it to, for instance, ring a bell or the chime I showed you in the previous videos, or make some lights light up in a certain way and then return back to its previous state automatically. Ready? Let's go. Okay, first I need to start with a little bit of a sad message. There is someone who created a very simple add-on for Home Assistant which makes things very easy. Sadly, he has given notice that he is going to stop maintaining the add-on since it's taking up too much of his time. Okay. He will keep working on a dedicated Docker version of it, although that's great, that doesn't really help if you just have a simple install of HasOS uh, or HasIO. For now, his repository still works though, and we are still going to use it in this video. I'm hoping someone watching this can maybe take over maintaining the add-on. It's not really in my ballpark, but that would be awesome. Okay, so the way this integration add-on works, Dahua has an API you can use to talk with the doorbell and check for events and such. A good internet person wrote a library for that, translating these API commands to MQTT, which can then easily be in integrated in all kinds of other software. From there, several things can be monitored or asked from the doorbell. Not all of the APIs currently expose over MQTT, but can still be done using API direct commands like opening the door relay from a button in Home Assistant, for instance. We're not going to go into that in this video, but just know it's possible. Now, to start the integration, we first need to make sure we have an MQTT broker running in our Home Assistant installation. This is basically the central hub or spine to which you can send commands or get information from by using a standardized protocol. Up until now, I've had the doorbell running through my test Home Assistant installation, so let's move it over to my production Home Assistant installation together. Before that, if anyone is interested in purchasing this doorbell, make sure to check out the links in the description. The first link especially is interesting for EU buyers since it ships locally from inside the EU so you won't have any import tax. And well, while you're there, a like on this video and maybe becoming a subscriber is very much appreciated. Right, installing the Mosquito Broker is easy if you're running HasIO. We go to the Supervisor menu and then on the top we select the Add-on Store. There we select the Mosquito Broker which is part of the default repository and hit Install. Once installed, we need to make a few configuration changes. Mainly, this is setting up a username and password for the MQTT server. Once set, we save that config and hit start in the info menu to start the add-on and, well, we're done for this part. Next up is installing the Dahua VTO add-on. This is not in the default repositories, so we need to add that repository first. The repository to add will be listed in the video description or I'll, uh, I'll show it on screen over here. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, he's going to stop maintaining it, but for now it still works perfectly. After adding the repository, we have a new add-on we can install, the Dahua VTO to MQTT add-on. Hit install for that one. Okay, we need to set a few values. First off, that is the IP address for the doorbell and then the username and password. These are the username and password you used for the doorbell's web interface in the previous video. Then we also need to set the host for the MQTT server and its data. In our case, Home Assistant itself is running the MQTT server, so we fill in its IP and then we set a, the username and password we set earlier for the MQTT server. 
We're going to keep the topic prefix the default Dahua VTO. If you have multiple doorbells connected, you might want to change that, but for our setup right now, it's fine. Save that and go back to the info tab and start the add-on. Once that's done, let's go to the log tab and there we should already see some of the doorbell data appearing. These are mostly pulses to see if everything is still alive, but that looks good. So now we have an MQTT link with the doorbell. But that in itself, well, doesn't do anything yet. We could play around with it using, for instance, Node Red, but I'd rather use some Home Assistant automations. So the next step we're going to do is add the button press of the doorbell as an entity in Home Assistant to which we can then attach some automations. I could give you a long story about the code and such, but we're just going to paste the following into our Home Assistant configuration.yaml file. You can go back and change the name and such later if you want, and you can find the exact lines you need in the video description again. Okay, once added, we need to restart Home Assistant to make it read the new config. Verified okay, restarting. Taking a look using the developer tools, we now have our binary sensor entity, which will be on when someone presses the doorbell and off when it isn't pressed. Let's build an automation. The simplest automation is an audio alert in the form of my relay trigger I've shown you in a previous video. Here it is again, and it's basically an ESP32 development board running ESP Home, which has a relay connected to it, which can switch the chime on and off. Now, this video would become too long if I went into detail how to install ESP Home and set up that part of it. Here is the code that module is running. Again, it'll be linked in, in the description. Quite simply, once you add this in ESP Home, it becomes available under the name set and triggering that button will trigger the relay from Home Assistant. The most important part to take from here is that in the code for ESP Home, I've set that it should open the relay for exactly 1250 milliseconds or 1.25 seconds once Home Assistant sends the command to enable it. After that, ESP Home turns it off automatically until Home Assistant asks to trigger it again. So it's become a momentary switch instead of a permanent one. I've made a video explaining relays in a bit more detail. You can uh, catch it up here. If you guys really want a more in-depth tutorial about ESP Home and maybe this setup, let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I can do that. So, right, so now we have the doorbell button as an entity in Home Assistant and we have the relay with which we can trigger a chime connected as a switch. Great, then there's only one last step to do, create the automation. Automations in Home Assistant have really become easy with their editor. Let's set up a new automation and we're going to call it doorbell minus ring chime. Then as a trigger, we want it to look at the state of the doorbell button. And in this case, it's our binary sensor doorbell state. And when it goes from off to on, it needs to trigger. Next, we're going to add an action. And we add a device action for doorbell relay and tell Home Assistant to turn it on. That will trigger the relay, which the chime is connected to, and make the doorbell ring sound we so desired in our previous episodes that we set up in ESP Home to ring only for 1.25 seconds. And after that, it will automatically stop again and turn the relay off. So even though Home Assistant doesn't send a command to do so, the timeout set in ESP Home makes sure that the doorbell immediately is ready to be rung again after 1.25 seconds. And because of that, we also don't need to send an off command through Home Assistant. That way, if you built in a delay in the automation, you can make Home Assistant ring the doorbell a few times if you wanted to. And well, there's lots of different ways to set this up. This is the one I used and that's been working fine. But now that we have all that set up, if you have more devices available in Home Assistant, we can do cool stuff. I don't have any Alexa or Google Assistant devices configured, but you could use that to tell you someone pressed a doorbell, for instance. Another thing we could do is use some of our LED lighting, which I have plenty of. So let's create an automation for that. To make this work seamlessly and not disturb whatever the lights were set to, we want Home Assistant to first capture the current state of the light we're going to change. Make it blink like crazy a few times 
and then return to whatever it was set to before. So our trigger is again the same, but now our actions are different. First, we do a call service to a scene.create and create a scene snapshot for the lights involved. In my case, this is an LED strip controlled by WLED running on one of my Queen LED Dig Uno boards. The full automation you saw me use in my previous videos was the following. I first send the snapshot command I just explained and then have HA turn off the light. Then I change its preset and effect and color to solid and red and then I turn it on. Then we're going to repeat that a few times with a delay. We end up doing this on off and wait for a second cycle a few times and then when it's complete, we turn the light off, we restore the setting and then turn it on again. This automatically deletes the snapshot that was used for that. And this way it doesn't disturb whatever the light was set to before. So this works during the day if the light is off or during the night when the, well, the light is set to some kind of lighting. When executing this, it, well, it kind of looks like this. And well, that's what I wanted to show you in this video. You could do a lot more such as capture an image when someone presses the doorbell and have HA send that to you over Telegram as an example, but that's too much to cram into one video. So let's keep that for a potential future video. Again, if there's some stuff you guys like, let me know down in the comments because it does influence what I show you guys. And with that, you should now have a basic but very functional doorbell setup. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you're looking to get one of these doorbell units, check out the links in my description. And I hope this video helped you getting the doorbell into Home Assistant. Let me know with a thumbs up. I gotta beg for, beg for those thumbs. Anyway, I hope to see everyone back for my next video, but for now, bye bye.